In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everyone loves a good vacation. A little time away from the stress, work, and responsibilities of everyday life. Vacations are meant to be that time to relax and recharge. So we may return to our everyday life rejuvenated. Now everyone has their own idea of that perfect vacation. Some would love an ice-cold drink on a sunny beach. Maybe we'll sit there and soak up the sun. Others, maybe a quiet cabin in the woods, enjoying nature's beauty. While others, maybe that perfect vacation is going to see friends and family you haven't seen in a long time. So whatever that perfect vacation is, the question is, do you know what the best part of every vacation is? Going home. Yes, it doesn't matter how much we love our des destination or how relaxing it is. Eventually, there's always something in us that wants to return home. We're all like Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. There's no place like home. Indeed, I remember going on many family vacations over the years, and this was always the case. Even having gone to Disney World, our prime location, we enjoyed our time there, yes, even after just a few short days, the novelty wears off. The comforts of home outweigh the adventure of travel. For we are all begging to climb back into our own warm, soft beds again, to have our own rooms again, and especially to be back with our friends again. Indeed, that's the thing about vacations. They're not meant to last. They're temporary, short, because we know that home is where we're meant to be. For so we often say we get homesick if we're away for too long. And of course, the only thing to cure being homesick is going home. So today, as Christians are so often homesick, for our time here on earth, is but temporary, like a vacation. Regardless how much we make out of life, how much we enjoy the life we have, we know deep down that this isn't our true home. As our bodies slowly waste away, we yearn for that place where we're truly meant to be. Each day we learn that we wait for God to clothe us with life. While we're on this earth, we won't be able to escape this feeling of being homesick. Yes, we enjoy our time here. We make the most out of it. However, being homesick, this feeling is centered on but one fact. Indeed, we're not where we're meant to be. This isn't our true home. No matter how hard we try to make it our home, or no matter how much we try to convince ourselves otherwise, won't change this simple fact. For so Paul writes in his letter to the Corinthians, For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. Indeed, what happens when we're homesick but can't go home? We groan. We're filled with this longing, this yearning for the place that we're meant to be, home. Here's the other thing about being homesick. Home isn't a place. It's not a specific house on the street. It's not any one location. Home is rather dwelling in and among the community we've been made for. This is why you can be sitting in your own house, on your own couch, and still be feeling homesick. For home is more than a place the people who surround us. And the reality is, we've been cut off from that community. The community God had destined for us. So we groan. We groan because we know this isn't how things were meant to be. 
For what cuts us off from this community? Sin. Sin and sickness, pain and misery, and death. Yes, we live in this body of death that has trapped us, cut us off from where we're meant to be. We're cut off from whom we're meant to be with. For so Paul writes, we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. Our home is nowhere else but the very presence of God, the way God had intended it in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve walked in God's presence and would have dwelt with God for all eternity in holy perfection had sin not entered in. For it's these two things that God has now put in our hearts that make us homesick. Perfection. Man was made to be perfect, sharing in the very image of God, being in perfect union with God and one another, a community. But you see, sin destroyed that image. Sin cut us off from our perfect home. Sin has cut us off from God. And likewise, eternity. Man has, was made to dwell with God, not just for a short time, that little vacation, but forever. For as Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes, God has put eternity into man's heart. But this body of death has cut, off, cut us off from that reality. It's cut us off from our eternal home. Death slowly sucks away the life that God had intended for us. For so we dwell in this mortal tent, longing, groaning as our bodies waste away, longing for the perfection of our eternal dwelling. Yet we must ask again, what is home? Where is home? We see this thing we wait for is closer than we might think. For home isn't some distant, mystical place off in the future. No. Rather, God has brought home to us by sending his Son. Jesus came down from heaven to take on human flesh, to join us in our earthly tents. Thus, God came to bring us back into the community that he had destined for us, that we may no longer be cut off. Our hope was never to become some wandering soul stripped naked of what makes us human, but to be further clothed, both body and soul together in God's presence. For so Paul tells us, for while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. For so God sent his Son to take on what is mortal, feeble, temporary in this world. Jesus came to take on, to clothe himself with our sin and our death. So in turn, he may clothe us with righteousness and life. For this God would do by sending Jesus to die on the cross, clothed in the world's sin and death, and cut off from the community of God. But Jesus, the author of life, on his, when he died on the cross, that wouldn't be the end of life rather the end of death itself. For in this way, God takes what is mortal, that is sin and death, and swallows it up with life. For so Paul tells us, we are always of good courage. And we know that if this tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. God hasn't left us naked, stripped of our humanity by the sin and death that rule our world, but rather has clothed us with the very life 
and righteousness of Christ. For God has prepared for you an eternal dwelling, a heavenly body, perfect and eternal, that we may dwell with God in the community of saints for all eternity. That we remember this is both a now and not yet reality. For you see, already Christ has clothed you, washed you clean in the waters of your baptism, that he may prepare for you for your eternal home. And already God has brought home to us by dwelling in our midst through his word and sacraments. And already Christ has swallowed up death forever by his life, death, and resurrection but also not yet. Not yet have we come into that full reality that God has made for us, our eternal dwelling, and that we wait for with patience because of the joy that God has given us and prepared it for us. We should have the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. And one day we shall indeed walk into such heavenly glory. For so Paul tells us, we walk by faith and not by sight. In faith, then, let us see our home, here even on earth, as God comes to us in our worship. That we should always be of good courage as we wait with patience for the eternal weight of glory which God has prepared for us in the life, death, and resurrection his own Son, Jesus Christ. In his name. Amen. Now may the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.